Brilliant. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Um, so good morning, everyone, and, and thank you very much for, for joining us today. Um, for those of you who don't know myself, um, as Dan mentioned, my name is John Tarleton. I'm the UK and Ireland Regional Sales Director for CICLU. Um, it's great to have everyone here. Uh, really, the idea of this presentation is to bring our customers a new opportunity rather than traditionally telling you about our latest and greatest, which, of course, we will naturally be doing. Um, for us, over the past few years, we've noticed a, a real shift in dynamic within most certainly the UK market, but uh, also the global market. The concept of a neutral host operator is something we think all of our partners should really start to consider. And really, the plan of this presentation uh, today is to hopefully open your eyes to this opportunity to which we, we hope to achieve during the period of, of this webinar. Uh, so let's jump straight in and, and before we do i wanted to uh quickly define you know what a neutral host network operator is um quite simply a neutral host operator is a company that owns telecom network uh, equipment and allows for one or more communication service providers to use that infrastructure to sell um a, or sorry to serve their customers uh, we as a manufacturer um, already work with all sorts of companies from security integrators service providers wisps isps etc that all use our products to typically help extend their network reach. Uh, by doing so, all of our customers on this call and all of our customers in our market base will either have their own network in whatever uh, geographical location that may be, whether that's in the UK or globally. Uh, as a result, everyone on this call has the ability to become a neutral host operator, which is as depicted by the image on this screen, is one of the most cost efficient ways to differentiate yourself in the market and future proof your network's capacity and coverage. Uh, now, for us at Cicli, we are often in conversation and communication with, with mobile operators all over the globe. Um, what has become abundantly apparent um, at this present time is the rollout of 4G and 5G infrastructure is crucial and is without doubt their number one target for years to come to provide better mobile coverage. Uh, in addition to this, they really uh, now couldn't care about what technology is being used to backhaul their network so long as it works, mainly because they need to get this ubiquitous coverage for their mobile technology. However, to achieve this goal, they need connectivity providers to help them connect up their small cell infrastructure. For most mobile operators, they have zero interest in backhauling their small cell network. And as a result, this opens up a huge opportunity for our customers to provide this service by taking advantage of the networks that you have already deployed. Now, I'm sure as most of you are aware, we've released, uh, recently released our Terragraph portfolio in conjunction with the support of Meta uh, Facebook. What we are suggesting is you'd start deploying our 60 gigahertz mesh point to multi point products to build redundant networks outside of your current network reach to connect operator small cell technology. Um, but why and to what benefit does this bring to you? Well, well, simply they are listed here. Uh, first and foremost, it's an easy way for you to add new tenants outside of the services you're already selling. Uh, naturally, with the densification of small cell infrastructure required to provide ubiquitous coverage, it means there are multiple ten uh, tenants for you to connect service to. Uh, in addition to this, by building these redundant networks, you as a network provider start to reduce expenses linked to redesign and infrastructure changes because the network is already available, providing gigabit coverage running through the street furniture. This then ultimately allows you to support more services outside of providing connectivity to said operators, as you can offer connectivity for smart city services, connect up IoT devices, um, public Wi-Fi, and, and many, many more. Now, to hopefully validate you know, what I'm saying regarding operators having zero interest in backhauling their mobile networks, and, and off the back of this now being open to looking at radio to connect up their infrastructure, you know, here is a, a direct quote from Vodafone's chief network officer, Andrea Donner, stating that at the very least, 30% of the network footprint used to connect their mobile networks will be achieved via radio technology. Now, the idea of all of this, I suppose, is, is wonderful. However, you know, why use Cyclo or, or millimeter wave technology? Um, well, we have customers who are already doing this today as neutral host network operators who are utilizing our technology to build these redundant networks across prestigious cities um, in the UK. Uh, we are joined today by Andy Hyde, who heads up network infrastructure for, for ONSIX, who will hopefully validate all that I am preaching on this webinar. Uh, now, as a direct quote, and you'll hear this from the horse's mouth later on, and sorry for calling you a horse there, Andy. 
Um, 60 gigahertz point to multi point technology is by far the most cost effective and efficient way to connect up MNO small cell infrastructure. Uh, to put this into numbers rather than just a concept, uh, we have Andy Hyde joining us today who will hopefully talk you through their business case discussing why they have utilized millimeter wave as the ideal solution to create these redundant networks rather than an alternative connectivity solution. Uh, Andy, are you OK to expand on you know, how and why ONSIX have and will continue to use millimeter wave as the medium to extend your network? And perhaps if you can give some details as to how you got concession to the lighting infrastructure, that would be of, of huge benefit. Absolutely. Good morning, all. Um, so ONTIX has a concession within the city of Westminster to utilise the lighting infrastructure for wireless technologies. The acquisition of that um, concession was not necessarily straightforward, but was far easier than trying to go down the equivalent route of gaining the ability to dig up most of central London, which, as you can well imagine, is tricky to say the least. Um, with that lighting, with that concession to use the lighting assets, we were looking at deploying a network that gave us a reliable high capacity reach to enable us to, to allow multiple network operators in the mobile world, but also in Wi-Fi cameras, IoT, to deploy services across a neutral host network that we built based around the lighting assets. When we first came to look at this, we the, the immediate thought is, well, we put fibre everywhere. Unfortunately, in central London, as in a lot of other places, fibre is quite rich in all the wrong places. Um, so digging our own fibre into the ground of very prestigious central London quickly became a hugely expensive activity. We needed an alternative, and the alternative we looked at was millimetre wave multi-point networks, primarily from Cyclu. They enable us to deploy high capacity, reliable networks that reach the places we and our customers need to reach at a minimal expense. As a rough guide, a single Cyclu node is roughly equivalent to sinking a single fibre chamber into central London. Wow. So the payback is reasonably obvious, I would have thought from that. Brilliant. Thanks, Andy. That's um, that's super helpful. Um, so taking a look then at, you know, who are neutral host networks most suitable for? Well, one of the main uh, applications or, or arguments could be made for the smart city, is, as Andy uh, alluded to just a moment ago. You know, safe to say once you have a, a gigabit network running through your street furniture, and bear in mind each one of our telegraph devices can connect to a further 60 gigabit capable subscribers, you can connect so many additional applications and IoT devices. You know, with everything being smart, needing connectivity, our 60 gigahertz point to multiple in product is perfect to connect up multiple IoT devices in a dense urban environment. Now, of course, the kicker for you as a customer, by building these mesh 60 gigahertz redundant networks going through said street furniture as a potential NHO, you can offer the perfect platform to connect up said smart, uh, smart city infrastructure, bring in additional revenue streams. You know, for me, it's often said that fiber is gold in the ground. However, in my humble opinion, Terragraph is really gold in the air as it enables flexibility, is as reliable as fiber and is gigabit plus capable. Uh, but not just a smart city, um, building host, building a, a neutral host network is also fantastic for traditional ISPs. And in reality, those ISPs that have already um, and network infrastructure, I would urge you to have a think about building these redundant networks with Terragraph, uh, Terragraph should I say, as you are already 80% there. Uh, you are simply extending your network reach cost effectively by activating the street assets to connect up operators small cell, uh, small cell technology, uh, which of course is beneficial to you as it allows you to leverage any existing relationships with councils who will have targets to improve mobile coverage and will also um, have targets to improve the digital divide which of course will, will tick many of their boxes. But more importantly for you as the ISP, it will bring additional revenue streams and it really is as simple as leveraging the existing infrastructure that's already there. 
Uh, so has this been done before uh, and do we have uh, NHOs utilising our telegraph technology for the purpose of connecting operators small cells um, today? Well, most certainly it has. Uh, we have partners rolling out these redundant networks across multiple prestigious locations, such as in London and, and specifically in Westminster area, with a network stretching from Mayfair to Trafalgar Square, hopping from street furniture to street furniture. Um, it is only a small picture in the bottom right, but here is an example of one of our telegraph nodes mounted near the top of the lamp column. It's a small painted black beer barrel looking unit providing connectivity in this instance to a, a ruckus outdoor AP. Uh, deep diving into this specific use case for, for Westminster, um, essentially this opportunity arose in, in 2018 as this really was the time where London's local authority district started to have a huge push on 5G smart city innovation. Uh, naturally, for a, a city to become a, a smart city, it requires a hell of a lot of IoT devices, which all need to be connected along with multiple other applications. Um, it is important to note that this smart city push was a ubiquitous standardization for all 32 of the London boroughs, not just for smart city innovation, but encompassing solving the digital divide, improving mobile coverage, which all ultimately progressed in the general upkeep and service of these individual boroughs. Uh, so what were the main challenges for the, the local authority? Um, well, they needed to implement a, a, a single city-wide network that can provide enough uh, capacity and be scalable to connect all applications required. Uh, the solution had to be a, a wireless solution with fiber-like performance without upfront trenching costs and a short deployment time. And the network had to be gigabit capable with extremely high reliability and, and low latency. Uh, so really for the council, this was uh, there was only one solution, should I say, to which our point to multi point 60 gigahertz telegraph series was the answer. By design, telegraph is a, a product perfect for dense urban deployments. Uh, when Meta gave us the blueprints and designs to create such a solution, its main goal was to solve that last mile connectivity issue where fiber is cost prohibitive. Uh, in addition to this, due to the abundance of spectrum we have across the 60 gigahertz frequency bands, the probability of interference is extremely low which is extremely important from a wireless standpoint. Also, with each one of our nodes being able to not just mesh, backhaul and individually connect to a further 60 gigabit capable subscribers with 360 degrees worth of coverage, it allows ample capacity and reliability to connect up any device from a small cell to a Wi-Fi AP, building, smart bin, uh, you name it. So as a result, uh, multiple London boroughs have, have now adopted this solution with even more in discussion. Um, the city has future-proofed its network infrastructure for years to come and will be able to add new devices uh, as and when required. Um, the network infrastructure is now in place for additional revenue streams as, as they arise, as previously mentioned. However, obviously, don't just take my word for it. Um, obviously, Andy, are you OK to elaborate a little bit more on, on this Westminster project? And perhaps discuss some of the other services that you're looking to sell off the back of it? Sorry, I was doing my normal trick of talking to myself on mute. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, we've built a footprint of Cyclu mesh network, uh, which operates as a neutral host network. And then across that, we have the ability to run multiple services of more or less any description that you like. So we're more than capable of running public Wi-Fi networks, high capacity Wi-Fi 6, high density outdoor coverage. Yeah. Uh, we can run uh, CCTV systems with full streaming HD 4K video. We can run multiple IoT services in parallel, and we also provide connectivity to MNOs for small cell densification in metropolitan urban air, urban areas, if I can say it properly. Um, it's a solution that's really only possible using millimeter wave technology in order to get us the reach that we need into the areas where those services are required by their relevant operators, but also giving us the ability to rapidly deploy and redeploy as and where required. Brilliant. And uh, thanks, Andy, for the information and background to the network you've rolled out in London. It is um, hugely appreciated. Um, for those in the call who have any questions, feel free to ask away at the end and we'll do our best to, um, to cover them off. Uh, so, you know, reaffirming our differences or the differences between millimetre wave and fibre, um, however, it is worth pointing out that even though 
we are a wireless communications company. We are still very much pro fiber, as of course, without a fiber presence, we simply cannot utilize um, wireless to extend a, a network's footprint. Um, for me, both connectivity options are crucial. And in reality, you know, the best networks, in my opinion, are always a hybrid um, network, including both fiber and millimeter wave. However, for the purpose of a neutral host network operator, is, it is crucial to be um, using both connectivity options. Uh, the idea is to already use the existing fiber infrastructure and then cost effectively extend that infrastructure through the air by utilizing millimeter wave solutions, as there is a, uh, clearly a whole heap of benefits to utilizing um, our technology and millimeter wave as depicted by the image here. You know, all of our radios come with a minimum of 128-bit or 256 bit AES encryption. We offer multi-gigabit capacity, so anywhere from 100 meg all the way through to 20 gigabits full duplex. Um, we're cost effective, as, as Andy um, mentioned earlier, compared to the deployment of most certainly new fiber in a city center. Uh, we offer low latency. Um, all of our radios and most certainly our latest Terragraph series have a, a 0.1 millisecond latency between each connection. Uh, we offer the widest spectrum. In fact, we have around about 19 gigahertz worth of virgin space and spectrum to operate in across 60, 70 and 80 gigahertz. Uh, we're extremely reliable and have a 90 year mean time between failure and all of our products. Um, we are immune to interference. We're not quite interference free, but that's a very, very low probability of getting interference in this um, frequency band because we have an abundance of spectrum. We utilize highly directional beams and we have a fast time to market. You know, it's wireless technology. It can be deployed next day. If the customer or tenant news, you can take it down and redeploy it somewhere else. Um, so ultimately, we think it is, you know, safe to say that anything under five kilometer range, you know, no longer requires fiber. Um, now, this is a bit of a, a sweeping statement as there are multiple factors that come into play when deciding on, you know, what connectivity option to go with, depending on speeds, distance, you know, line of sight, network topology, backbone infrastructure, etc. But I suppose, you know, in the round, any opportunity that requires gigabit connectivity that has line of sight, and a backbone infrastructure in place, and most certainly millimeter wave should be a high priority when deciding what technology uh, to, to deploy because of its inherent benefits as discussed previously on this, this webinar. So really this is our value proposition. You know, we offer the means to transition to millimeter wave and replace fiber, or more importantly, extend a fiber's network reach. In particularly when we look at the neutral host use case, it is clear fiber cannot be used in every location to connect to mobile operator infrastructure. I think this is absolutely the case when we consider looking at connecting 4G or 5G small cells due to the densification required for these networks. You know, a fiber only approach would be too expensive. It would take far too long due to the constraints that come with rolling out fiber, such as way leaves and also the physical trenching. And more importantly, it would end up looking a bit like spaghetti junction. Now for us at Cicli, we do like to consider ourselves as a, a value-add manufacturer. And for those who have joined the call today and are interested in exploring the idea of becoming a neutral host network operator, we would like to offer you a complimentary network design and, and project consultation um, on us in the first instance. Um, I'm confident most of our partners on this call um, today are aware we have complimentary network design tools and excellent planning resource at HQ. Um, the idea really is for us to take our customers from conception through to design, through to physical deployment in really just a matter of days. So, you know, please do let us know if this is of interest. You know, feel free to reach out to myself, as you can see my contact details on this slide and, and just um, fire us an email. Um, we would really love to prove the point we have made today and hopefully bring you as our customers a new idea as to how to squeeze a little bit more revenue out of your, you know, already excellent network. So, um, that's really it from us, short and, short and sweet, should I say. Um, any questions, feel free to raise a hand on, a, on the chat and we will uh, do our best to, to answer.